All set? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, hello everyone. This is your friend and tutor Manas and in today's session, we are going to take up an example based on a continuous beam. I'm pretty much sure that you guys know this. If you've got more than two end supports, not two end supports, if you've got more than two supports, let's say, then that falls in the category of a continuous beam. Now, what we essentially need to do over here is to make the shear force and bending moment diagram for this beam. How can that be done? Well, we are going to use the Clapeyron's three moment equation. So how to approach this? Well, the first approach is going to be to split this entire continuous beam into two distinct simply supported beams. That is simply supported beam AB and simply supported beam BC. Let's split, let's divide and let's rule and here we go, split it up. Okay, I don't know whether this much space of whiteboard will be enough to complete the entire analysis or not. Let's kick off. So we, we, we've got this much portion. Let us split it. Okay, yeah. That's good. Now this over here guys is a beam AB, obviously. A, B. Okay, so it is actually carrying a UDL. The magnitude is, let me see, this is a smaller magnitude. This one is 20 kN per meter. Right. So this is 20 kN per meter. And this, this length has been given as 4 meters. Fine. So this is beam number 1. Okay. So you have a knife. <laughs> you have a scissor, not a knife. So you cut this beam into two halves. Two distinct simply supported beams. And you know very well that uh, whenever you are analyzing a simply supported beam, the bending moment at the end supports will by default be equal to zero. Okay, you should know this. Anyway, so this is the uh, left portion, this one portion. Now the right portion is, is going to be looking something of this sort. Let me just show you. Uh, well, let me make it over here. Done. Now, as far as this portion is concerned, this is uh, B, that's C, and as far as UDL is concerned, guys, the UDL is something of this sort. The magnitude is slightly higher. So that's why I'm making slightly exaggerated version of this UDL. Okay. Now, this, this is obviously, this is B, and that's C, and the magnitude is 30 kilo newton per meter okay what else uh, we also know that this is 5 meters and apart from that this is your second beam so these are two distinct simply supported beams when you combine them you'll what you'll have is a continuous beam and this is our way of approach so obviously this is going to be having a reaction over here isn't it we actually don't need this reaction okay we'll calculate it later on but first of all what we need to do is we need to immediately apply the Clapeyron's three moment equation, right? Anyway, first thing, let's let's draw the bending moment diagrams individually for both the beams. So it's going to be something like this. Let me just show you. I'll also show you the calculation which needs to be done. This is the zero mark. Okay. Obviously, since this is a uniformly distributed load, what you'll have is a curve, right? The maximum height of the curve, by the way, this height is the value of maximum bending moment. How to get this value? So just watch, this value can be obtained by this simple calculation. This is going to be WL square by 8. Always remember, this bending moment, the maximum value of bending moment, WL square divided by 8. And once you plug in the value, W is how much? 20. Everything is kilo newton. Remember, so this will work out in kilonewton meter, right? Multiplied by L square, how much is L? That is 4, 4 square divided by 8. You just plug in the values, you just do the calculation. This is probably going to work out as, I've done my calculation, I just need to plug in the values. Okay, so this is going to work out as um, this WL square by 8. Let me check how much it is, 20 into 4 square by 8. This is 40 newtons. Not 40 newtons, but 40 knm to be very precise. So this is 40 knm. So that's done. Okay. Now, similarly, what we can do is we can analyze this 
simply supported beam also okay so let me have a zero line and in order to make this what I'll do is the parabola will be slightly bigger in scale isn't it since the UDL is a bit higher this is 20 this is 30 therefore you're going to have a sort of bigger parabola now what we want is the maximum bending moment over here yeah how can this be achieved here also you need to apply the same formula w l square by 8 and in this case the value of w is what this is 30 30 into l square that is 5 square over 8 you just plug in the values and let me check this is going to be equal to where is this gone where is this gone uh, 30 to 5 square by 8 okay so this is working out as 93.75 93.75 this is k n m so let me just write this over here 93.75 k n m so we've got the value of maximum bending moments for both the beams now how to apply the Clapeyron's three moment equation let me just write the equation somewhere where can I write it let me write it over here okay so this space let me reserve this space for both shear force and bending moment diagrams that will be better right let's say let's apply the Clapeyron's three moment equation okay uh, let me make some space here what what do we need to apply Clapeyron's three MD three moment equation Clapeyron's three moment equation I think you should know the equation and even if you don't not to worry I'll let you know what the equation is and how or what are the different parameters needed to apply or implement that equation properly so it goes like this so you are having two beams so there are going to be bending moments a b and c since it is simply supported this entire continuous beam is simply supported it is at a and at c over here let's let's write this properly this is going to be m a l1 okay plus 2 m b this is going to be l1 plus l2 plus m c l2 plus 6 a1 x1 now some of you guys might be thinking what the hell is a1 what is x1 not to worry plus 6 times of a2 x2 by l2 all of this stuff is going to be equal to 0 now remember as it is a continuous beam okay this continuous beam is actually simply supported at a and at c therefore moment at a is equal to 0 and moment at c will also be equal to 0 don't worry by default so you are left with variables in the form of mb a1 x1 a2 x2 a1 x1 a2 x2 all of these stuff can be calculated using these uh, these diagrams rather okay now let me make this again what we need to calculate is area a1 so how much is a1 if you watch area of parabola is nothing but two-third of the area of rectangle if you if you consider this to be inside a rectangle that rectangle is going to have this side as four meter and this height as 40 so you just do the math 2 by 3 times of 2 by 3 times of uh, 4 into 40 and this is going to work out as 106.67 so a1 value is 106.67 so this is the area okay similarly you can also calculate a2 a2 is going to be equal to 2 by 3 times of the rectangle enclosing this parabola so that rectangle is having a length of 5 2 by 3 times of 5 and a height of 93.75 93.75 just try to do the math let me check how much this value is going to work out as and this will be equal to 312.5 okay let me check yeah a2 will be equal to 312.5 so these two parameters we have calculated a1 and a2 what we need now is x1 and x2 this x1 is nothing but xl what this essentially means is the distance of centroid centroid of what centroid of bmd from left 
whereas this x2 is nothing but the distance of centroid from right i am not writing the entire sentence distance of centroid from right let's let's write this as distance of g that is centroid g from right okay so if you watch carefully the centroid would be somewhere here somewhere along this line right so from the left its distance would be x this is going to be what this is going to be x1 is equal to x from left this is going to be equal to 2 simply and for for this particular diagram what we need is distance of centroid from the right this is x2 x2 distance of centroid from the right from the right and this is obviously half of 5 half of 5 is 2.5 so you simply need to plug in all those values in this equation now you, you, you take a look you got the value of x1 as 2 you got the value of x2 as 2.5 you know a1 you know a2 a1 and a2 what you now need to do is to plug in all these values apart from that you also know ma and mc both of them will be equal to 0 it's a continuous beam which is simply supported at both the ends that is at a starting end as well as the ending end and that's why the bending moments are going to zero but if you remove this simply support at a and if you make a fixed support over here then in that case the bending moment is not going to be zero there is going to be a fixing moment which will come into the picture tab usko kaise analyze karna hai problem leke batayenge baad mein but filhal ke liye ek bahut hi basic sa problem hai ठीक है कुछ पोर्शन में यूडीएल 20 है कुछ पोर्शन में यूडीएल 30 है इसके लिए एसएफ और बीएम डायग्राम कैसे बनता है लेट्स लेट्स वर्क इट आउट टुगेदर ओके सो लेट अस प्लग इन ऑल द वैल्यूज 0 into l1 0 वेल बाय द वे दिस इज l1 लेट मी राइट दिस ओवर हियर दिस इज l1 एंड दैट्स l2 सो दैट्स 0 प्लस 2 टाइम्स ऑफ mb 2 mb l1 plus l2 दैट इज 5 plus l1 is 4 plus 5 does not matter plus again 0 mc has to be taken as 0 plus 6 times of let me put a bracket over here 6 times of x1 so we already know what the value of x1 is x1 is how much that is 2 so 6 into 2 6 into a1 first of all okay a1 how much is a1 that is 106.67 106.67 into into x1 x1 is 2 all of that divided by l1 l1 is 4 isn't it plus Again, 6 A2 X2, 6 into A2. A2 is how much? This is A2. 312.5. 312.5 multiplied by X2. How much is X2? Well, X2 is this. 2.5. 2.5. All of this divided by L2. That is 5. Okay. L2 is 5. So, you just need to solve this equation. Single equation with a single unknown. That is MB. So, MB can be easily calculated from this. And MB, obviously... As I told you, okay, in the previous video also, the intermediate support is always going to have or most of the time is going to have a negative bending moment which suggests that it is a case of hogging which means the beam will bend in this way. Okay, this way. Not this way. This is sagging case. The beam will bend in this manner. If it's a negative bending moment. Hogging case. Okay, concavity upwards. So, MB will obviously work out as let me write the answer finally. Minus 69.86 minus 69.86 knm and what this negative sign is indicating is the the bending moment is hogging case okay that's it now how can we approach this further <laughs> i need to make some more space that's not enough I need to rub all of this. Then only we can proceed. I need to rub all of this. So guys, do one thing. Um, note this down. Pause the video and note this down. Because I am about to rub all of this stuff. Okay? Because I also need to calculate the reaction at A. I will be calculating the reaction at B. Also the reaction at C. And for doing that, I need some space. So here, I have to put it here. I am नोट कर लो आप वीडियो को पॉज करके केल खलास ओके डन नाउ नाउ व्हाट नाउ वी नीड्स टू बी कैलकुलेटेड इज द आदि रिएक्शंस रदर ओके वन जस्ट अ सेकंड लेट मी चेक whether it is shooting or not properly yes everything is going pretty well okay what now needs to be done is the calculation 
so here we go this so rv will be calculated in from two for perspectives one from this beam let's say rb1 one from this beam from rb2 and this is obviously going to be reaction at c and this is going to be reaction at a now let us try to analyze both the beams separately um, let me talk about beam 1 first so this is beam 1 all the calculations are going to be over here and for beam 2 all the calculations will be here so let me just make a distinction let me just draw a division line uh, okay so that there won't be any confusion at least i can expect okay right first thing which immediately that you need to do is summation use the equations of static summation of all the forces in y direction is equal to 0 very basic two forces upwards okay one force downwards so the two forces which are upwards take them as positive ra plus rb1 is equal to there is only one force downwards right so in one meter it is 20 just watch in one meter the lo total load acting is 20 kN span length is 40 not 40 but 4 meters so for 4 meters the total load acting in the downward direction will be 4 times that is 20 into 4 is 80 kN acting downwards so this is obviously going to be your first equation okay as simple how do you frame the next equation again use the equation of statics by using this moment equation moment about a specific point let's take the moment about this point that is point a right it's going to become very simple so when you take moment about point a this force cannot be considered the remaining forces are this reaction rb1 anti-clockwise just take a look anti-clockwise rb1 multiplied by 4 so if it is anti-clockwise my convention is positive anti-clockwise positive 4 times of rb1 so if you watch there is this udl the udl the net force value in 1 meter it is 20 so in 4 meters it is going to be how much 80 just take a look at this it's something like this if i convert that udl into form of a point load the total load acting will be at the center this is going to be how much 4 times of 20 that is 80 kN isn't it and then the, it is going to act right at the center this distance is how much half of 4 that is 2 so 80 cross 2 minus minus 80 cross 2 and all of this is going to be equal to 0 you just need to solve this equation very simple rb1 80 into 2 is 160 let me check let me check whether the value of rb1 that i'm about to calculate is correct or not rb1 let me see let me see uh, rb1 something else is left okay one thing which i forgot let me write this mb how much is this this is a very important point mb is how much minus 69 hogging nature that means you have to apply it over here we'll try to bend the beam in this fashion concavity and here also the magnitudes are well let me type the magnitude 69.86 for this beam it is clockwise for this beam it is anti-clockwise remember this i forgot and i cannot write this so we are taking the moments if this is a clockwise moment negative sign this is obviously 69.86 and this is going to be equal to zero you just need to solve this equation and let me see whether it has been framed properly for rb1 18 to 2 69.86 you just need to put this up into a calculator and rb1 that you are going to get is going to be equal to 57.46 57.46 kilo newtons let me check 57.46 kilo newton what about ra it's going to be damn simple ra is equal to you just put the value of 57.46 over here so 80 minus 57.46 will give you ra very simple ra guys will work out as 22.53 22.53 kilo newton so these are very two important results okay which we are going to be referring for making the final shear force diagram sft right similarly let us try to apply the same funda over here so summation of all the forces in y direction is equal to zero so two forces upwards take them as positive one force downward take that as negative so you've got rb2 plus rc 1 meter 30 so for 5 meters 5 into 30 that is 150 so this is your first equation okay don't need to frame an equation write the equation number 
Secondly, what you need to do is apply another equation of statics moment about let's say this point take it as 0 mb is equal to 0. So what you have rc multiplied by 5 anti-clockwise. So if this is going to be 5 times of rc then you've got this udl. So if you watch if you watch this udl can be converted into a sort of point load. Okay, so 1 meter that is 30 for 5 meters it is going to be 150. So 150 multiplied by this distance that is exactly half of 5. 2.5 so obviously what is this clockwise minus 150 into 2.5 okay and this is covered this is covered this is left this is anti-clockwise therefore put a positive sign how much is the magnitude 69.86 69.86 and all of this is equal to zero just use a calculator okay and you are going to get the value let me check. Let me check. 5 RC minus 150 to 2.5 plus 69.86 RC will work out as RC will work out as 61.03 kilo newtons. And when you put this value in this equation, you are going to get the value of RB2. RB2 work out as how much 150 minus this, this fellow over here. Uh, how much is this? 88.79. Yeah. 88.79 by itna to ho gaya reactions bhi nikal gaye intermediate bending moment tha wo bhi nikal gaya by using the clapeyron's three moment equation the only stuff remaining is let let me just write the final stuff so if you watch ra is equal to 50 not 50 but 22.53 22.53 kilo newton rb will be equal to rb1 plus rb2 you just add them when you add them this is what you'll have 146.43 okay this and this 146.43 kilo newton and finally you've got rc rc you already know the value 61.03 61.03 and in kilo newtons right so let me respect okay so these are very important values which will help us in making this shear force diagram really okay what to do now what should i proceed with let's start by making the bending moment diagram okay so we've got a space here this is the zero mark bending moment diagram this is knm this is BMD. Let me write this. This is bending moment diagram in kilonewton meters. So first of all, separate bending moment diagrams. We already saw. Uh, this is what you saw. A curve like this. Okay. When you when you cut this beam into two halves, four meter and five meter, then you saw this also. A slightly bigger version, isn't it? Now, as far as this value is concerned, guys. How much was this? <laughs> I've erased all these stuff. Okay, I have to refer my notes. You guys can refer your notes. Uh, this value was 40. Right? 40 KNM. I'll just write this as 40. I know what the unit is. And over here, this maximum value worked out as Kidar gaya baba? Kidar gaya? 93.75. Right? This one was 93. 0.75 okay so obviously it's a clear-cut case of positive bending moment isn't it positive bending moment let us make another thing right so you we actually used the clapeyron's three moment equation considering this entire beam okay these two are made separately considering two separate beams beam one and beam two so if you consider this entire beam as a whole you you got the value of bending moment at Add me. How much was that value? That value actually worked out as 69.86. Okay. So height will be somewhere between 40 and 93, but in the opposite direction. Somewhere here. Let me try to plot it. Somewhere here. How much? 69.86. In the negative direction, obviously, you've got to be absolutely sure about this. Let me use a blue color. Right. And this is negative, but you need to make a consolidated diagram. You need to make one single diagram for BMD. By the way, 
this is also BMD. Don't get confused. Right? K and M. Now we are going to combine them. What will happen after the combination? Uh, watch. 0 final what final? final B MD final B MD so initially you had this then you had this ok so these this was a sort of students this was sort of a positive region isn't it ok let me overlap this let me mirror this if it is like this, let me put it up like this and place it over here. What will happen? Just watch, watch. Very interesting. 69.86. This is this is by the way 40. And this by the way over here is 93.75. If we just mirror this and place it over here, what will happen is something of this sort. Let me just illustrate that to you. 69 point something that it's, it's going to be like yeah somewhere here okay and then so we have combined both the diagrams the first diagram is two distinct beams two uh, two distinct simply supported beams and then this was a continuous beam which is having a negative bending moment here clearly see right when you combine them this is entirely negative this is entirely negative this negative will eat up this positive over here this much positive region and this this negative will also eat up this positive region also so the only positive region which is now left is this over here let me just show that to you the only positive region which is left is this that is the positive region this is also a positive region the remaining stuff is gone okay let me put a plus over here same here and this is obviously going to be a negative region there is nothing positive in this region only negative okay so if i were to make this finally right right i don't have to use a different color rather this is done this is the region then this is the region then this is the region that's it that's it that's the final bending moment diagram now ab kya kar sakte hain Shear force bana lete Uske liye, what we need to do is we need to extend this and same here and this is going to happen very quickly okay I'll also be referring a calculator for this purpose which color shall I use whichever color you want kuch bhi le lo yaar kya farak padta hai ki farak pahenda hai blue se bana de chalo mm. blue or lal se bana lete hain bhaiya kaha dikkat hai okay watch so let's start from here this is a shortcut approach you can obviously use the method of sections you can keep big make these sections one by one and you can work out the shear force value i'll i'll do the shortcut i'll start from here what is the reaction at you okay just try to learn this technique this is going to be really helpful for any problem based on shear force and bending moment diagram okay this is just a Continuous beam. Anyway, this can essentially be applied to any beam. Simply supported. Overhanging, cantilever, you name it. This is going to be applicable. 22.53. So, we'll travel 22.53. 22.53. RA. Is it it? So, 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 that's, that's 22.53. I hope you guys are able to see this letter size properly. Anyway, let me just write this. This is SFD, shear force diagram. And obviously, the unit is going to be kilonewtons. Now what? You see, after this point, there is UDL continuously in the downward direction. So, for one meter, for one meter, there is 20. So, if you travel one meter, this will go down by 20 kilonewton. If you travel two meters, it will go down by 40. If you travel three meters, when you reach here, Okay, if you travel 3 meters, it will go down by 60 kilonewtons. But when you travel 4 meters, 4 meters right here, you will have to go down by 80 meters. Just try to understand this fact. This, from this level, from this level essentially, when you reach here, you will be down by 80 kilonewtons. 
okay once again here we are starting so for every one meter you have to so for every one meter the shear force value the shear force value will decrease by 20 kN then it will decrease further by 40 over here then 60 over here then 80 over here so for every in 4 meters the shear force will decrease by 80 kN so here it will be 80 kN some portion will be above how much portion will be above 22.53 and the remaining portion is going to be again it will 80 kN in the downward direction from here you can say okay don't worry it's we are not going to go straight forward okay this was just an example to show you that this is 22.53 this is 80 80 minus 22.53 will show you the remaining portion over here very simple we'll get the idea very soon so this is going to be 80 minus 22.53 this is working out as 57.47 okay 57.47 let me just write this 57.47 so there is a gradual decrease understood the idea if you are starting from here this is 22.53 then as soon as you move ahead the value of shear force keeps on decreasing and when you reach here that is at point B the shear force must have decreased by an amount of 4 into 20 that is 80 so if you just make an addition this plus this will work out as 80 right so first we went this way then we went this way done okay so if, if there had been no load in between then we would have gone straight and then down right but there is load between a and b and that is a uniformly distributed load at each and every point you are going to get a different value of shear force okay how to proceed now now you see our rb rb is how much kidar gaya rb rb is 146.43 so you need to go one travel 146.43 out of that 146.43 which we need to go in the upward direction 57.47 is already there okay again you need to use calculator so this is going to be 146 point kitna hai kidhar gaya kidhar gaya kidhar gaya 146.43 minus answer minus this much 57.4 so this is 88.96 again fairly simple let me just write this over here 88.96 88.96 88 so from here you need to travel in this direction beautiful now things are going to get very easy again the same stuff watch this as you move forward the value of shear force is again going to decrease because of this load in the downward direction right 1 meter 13 kilometer not kilometer 30 kilonewton so for 2 meters it is going to be 60 so as you try to move from b to c the shear force value will decrease by 5 into 30 that is 150 okay so as soon as you reach here it will be 150 out of that 150 88.96 is above so how much is below out of that 150 88.96 is above so how much is below 150 minus answer and this is going to work out as 61.04 again very easy <coughs> 61 point so where shall i place this this is 57 60 somewhere here 61 point 0, 4 or 0, 3 whatever you can write it as done so let me just make a line okay finally reaction at C how much is the reaction at C 61.03 <laughs> done closed go upwards by 61.03 and this is in fact 61.03 done this is 0 so you started from 0 and you have ended at 0 positive negative positive negative that's the shear force diagram I hope by watching this video, you've understood as to how the Clapeyron's three moment equation can be applied. Okay. And after you got the, after you get the value of this intermediate bending moment, kidhar gaya, kidhar gaya. after you get the value of this intermediate bending moment, what you need to do is, again, you have this diagram, you need to put in the hogging sense. It will bend the beam in this direction. This, this will bend the beam in this direction. Okay. This is over here clock, over here anti-clock. And you just have need to apply the equations of statics. You get the value of react reactions. These reaction values are going to help you in making the shear force diagram. Once you've got the value of bending moment, the intermediate bending moment, then things are going to get very easy. This, this can be made. Okay. So guys, that was all for today. I'll see you again in the next video. Until then, take care. Have a nice day. Keep learning. Keep watching. And thank you.